The Big Ten media rights deal was announced on Thursday morning, and it was massive. Absolutely massive. $7.5 billion over seven years, and this is per the Wall Street Journal. They've got a relationship with Fox, so I think that those numbers are the most accurate. But from everything that you've been able to read, it's between seven and eight. So we'll just go with $7.5 billion right there. That is a lot of money. And it begins next year, the 2023 college football season. You will see things change. We'll go ahead and bring it up on the screen here. But the agreement, of course, includes the Big Ten Network, CBS, Fox Sports, FS1, NBC Sports, and the Peacock streaming service. Now, what it does not include on that graphic there is there will be some games on Paramount. So we'll we'll get into all of that. Uh, the details here, really, uh, just a ton of wordage and everything else. It goes into the agreements grant uh, for all of the different partners, which is Big Ten Network, CBS. Uh, it does say Big Ten football and basketball broadcasts will also be streamed on Paramount Plus, which is Paramount Global's direct-to-consumer streaming service. Uh, starting in 2024, CBS will televise up to 15 regular season football games per season, including an annual Black Friday game in the afternoon. Now, that takes the place of... Missouri and Arkansas, which has been the Friday SEC game for quite some time. Now, another interesting part of this is CBS's initial season in 2023 will include seven football games and both regular season and postseason men's basketball action. Now, they've had the Big Ten Tournament championship for quite some time, right? CBS still has their deal with the SEC in 2023. This is going to be interesting because it is they are contra uh, contractually obligated to air the SEC game in that 3.30 p.m. Eastern time window. And that's also the time window when they are supposed to be airing the Big Ten second tier game, whatever that may be. I'm really curious how they're going to get around this or is there some kind of a deal that has been done in the background to where ESPN or ABC, whatever, the parent company in Disney, are they going to buy the rights a year early? Now, that's something we've been talking about for quite some time. I'm curious to see if this won't automatically begin next season, uh, but maybe they'll just buy the rights for some of the games for 2023. We shall see. Maybe that's how they get around it with only seven football games next year. Uh, Fox of course, has their big agreement, uh, 10 to 14 games involving a Big Ten team, uh, et cetera, for Main Fox, Big Fox, whatever you want to call it. Of course, a ton of games on FS1, et cetera. Uh, going to be huge for Fox because they own the Big Ten network as well. So it's it's definitely big. NBC, it says, will produce 14 to 16 games on broadcast television each season as it introduces college football fans to Big Ten Saturday night. So it's not college football night in America. It is Big Ten Saturday night. So that is interesting. Uh, each Big Ten game on NBC will be broadcast or simul-streamed to Peacock, which is NBC Universal's direct-to-consumer streaming service. Uh, this is, this is going to be interesting because it says for Peacock, uh, they will deliver exclusive Big Ten football and basketball games each season. Notice that word, exclusive. Eight regular season football games will appear on the platform, along with as many as 47 regular season men's basketball games. That's 32 games in conference and 15 non-conference matchups, along with 30 regular season women's basketball games, 20 conference and 10 non-conference. Uh, it says CBS, Fox, and NBC will combine efforts to televise the seven Big Ten football championship games during that term. Now, this is big because Fox has had the Big Ten championship game for a long time, and it has produced incredible ratings results for them. So I'm surprised that they were willing to give up some of this, but that is a huge property that they might could get away with giving away for a year or two. And what they do in this, out of the seven years, Fox is doing it four times, CBS twice, and NBC once. CBS has it in 2024 and 2028. Fox has it in 2023, which is next season. 2025, 2027, and 2029. So basically every other year, and NBC will have it in 2026. Uh, this is, I mean, this is massive. Um, just a huge, huge deal. Now, this does lead us to some questions here. Because according to the Action Network, and I'll go on and bring that up here, uh, there are, there's an escalator clause in this. 
Now, if you look at it, uh, it says Big Ten Lands Historic Media Rights Deal, and then it says more expansion ahead. Now, I had been told by a couple of people that that might be interested or, or invested in this, I'll say that, that the Big Ten is looking to expand, and they are at not only looking at the Pac-12, but also at the Big 12. Now, I don't know anything specific other than that, but they are... They are really looking for more expansion. They are looking to go as an all-American conference. Just all over this entire country, they want to have a footprint in some of the biggest areas. So, uh, the contract has an escalator clause, meaning the deal could approach nearly $10 billion if the Big Ten's membership increases, network sources said. Even after adding USC and UCLA, the Big Ten is, quote, not done expanding, sources told the Action Network. Now, uh, it goes into they were targeting Notre Dame, uh, along with that Oregon, Washington, Stanford, and Cal, which is something that CBS put out not that long ago. Uh, but there are some other things involved in this, and that escalator clause is a big, big deal, right? Because you can go back to the renegotiating table and it still be part of that contract that is kept together, right? Uh, you don't have to necessarily go back with the exact same people, but now you do because it is automatically put into this contract. Uh, the contract is backloaded for USC and UCLA to join in 2024. So next year, they will make nearly $60 million uh, per school, which is about the same distribution that they have been making. So they'll continue to make that in 2022, 2023, and then in 2023, 2024, and it will continue to grow slightly after that, and it's going to be majorly backloaded on the back end. Uh, it's going to grow to about $100 million per school, including revenue from the CFP, bowl games, and the NCAA basketball tournament. So it's not just this money that they're getting. They're also going to be getting their share of whatever the next stuff is, the next CFP contract, right, the next playoff contract, uh, along with bowl games, of course. Each team, each conference makes a bit off of that. And the NCAA basketball tournament, however many teams you get in, you get a cut of those certain units, right? And so this is... Again, I can't state how big this is. Having a 12 p.m., a 3.30 p.m., and a 7 p.m. game on three major national networks, it's, it's going to expand the reach of the conference, for sure. We saw what the CBS deal did for the SEC. Now, throw in the fact that the SEC never had a game on ABC, really, uh, at least over the past 20 years. But you've got that one main ABC spot for the SEC, but now you got all three of the other major networks that will be broadcasting Big Ten games. This is big for the conference. Very, very big. I'm uh, I'm curious to see what's going to happen. I am curious to see what's going to happen for sure. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app, and make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.